Hello friends, this is a small video for beam designing in RCTC wherein we will cover the topics which are displayed here over on the screen. We will first start with the flanged beam application on the beam. We have over here in design settings, general and reinforcement. We have flanged beam option which we can tick and we have two more options under the under this option that is secondary beams to be flanged beams only or we want all the beams to be flanged beam. If we select only the secondary beams to be flanged beams and say OK. See an additional option or an additional column is created over here wherein we can see the secondary beams B9 over here. So this is a secondary beam which it has identified as the flanged beam T. We require to input the thickness over here. Let's say it to be 120 mm. Similarly, all the T-shaped beam or the flanged beam, say B15, which will be highlighted over here in the layout, we have to input it as, we have to input the flange thickness over here. Let all the beams have the flange thickness as 120 itself. Also, what we can do over here for getting the flange thickness, we should go to file, go to import slab data. So select the file wherein uh, the uh, slab file is run in RCDC. I'll just select the RCDC slab file. So now it is importing the RCDC slab data. Let us see what all parameters does it import. Basically, it will import the thickness of the slab of the designed file. So it has imported the slab geometry and the slab thickness. So once we press OK, we can see the thickness of the corresponding or the adjacent slabs are imported and um, extracted from the RCDC file which are applied over here. So that's all with the flanged beam, uh, the flange thickness of the T beam action or let it be a L beam, uh, L -beam action. We will now continue uh, with the explanation of preferred bar settings for beams which can be made in beams. Continuing with the same RCDC beam file, when we go to settings, we have an option of preferred bar spacing over here. To set the number or the spacing for a rebar which is less than or equals to 16 mm diameter and for rebars which are greater than or equal to 20 mm of diameter. Another option we have in this window, window is to provide two rebars in zone with zero bending moment. Let me first explain you how this works. Uh, we can just uh, fix uh, the value or, or the numbers for the particular width of the beam or we can fix the spacing for a particular width of the beam so that we can just uh, carry on with the same number or the same spacing. This is applicable. These columns are for the 16 mm rebar or less than that. These are for 20 mm rebar or greater than that. And this setting is applicable in the case wherein there is no bending moment for a beam and this is disregarding or disrespective of the minimum or the maximum number and the spacing criteria. Only two bars in the beams can be provided. Uh, let us just select this and say OK. We will auto run and see the effect of the setting on the beams practically. So my file is run. Now let us just see the reports. In reports, we will see the section and elevation say for the same beam B15. Select the beam, say OK. So in this section we should see it is 60, 16. The width is 350. We can cross check. We can go to settings, preferred bar settings. So for 350, the number is 6. Okay. So we see that for 350, it has provided six number of bars. Uh, so this is the use of uh, preferred bar settings that can be made in a beam for setting a fixed value or a desired value for a given width beam. So that was with the preferred bar settings. Next, uh, we should move on the next topic which says or explains the detailing styles that can be set for the top and bottom of a beam. That option is available with us in the general and reinforcement settings under the settings menu. 
we have the detailing settings option over here this is a really very important feature which every user should understand I have two detailing style for top and bottom for top in the drop down list i have best fit i have max dia and i have minimum dia let me select the minimum dia and show you the results for bottom detailing styles i'll select the maximum dia these are the general uh, used practice uh, styles for detailing which are used this means that a minimum dia will, will be uh, provided throughout the length of the beam or throughout a group of a beam probably and for bottom detailing style when we choose maximum dia it shows that the maximum dia which is uh, calculated or designed for a beam is provided at the bottom and the extra requirement of bars will be provided in the layered form let us just see how it is done say ok and auto run the file so in short uh, for a better explanation i have summarized uh, the, deta uh, the detailed style of maximum dia for bottom reinforcement i have two options that is one is best fit and one is max dia so for bottom reinforcement i can see the steel provided for four beams in a group is this that is 325 then i have 20 diameter that is used i have the 16 diameter also that is used so best fit will provide the actual area of steel that is required in each zone that is left mid and right throughout the beams i mean all the four beams will have different ast at all the three sections so the actual ast that is required will be provided next when we move on to maximum dia detailing style what it will do is it will select the maximum dia out of all the all these three diameters available and provide it as a through bar so that there is no uh, lot of lapping required at any zone or any section then whatever additional steel is required will be provided like over here we can see that 25 is the max dia which is provided throughout and whatever additional steel is required is provided over here like 3t20 was required for best fit now it is provided 2t25 so it means that uh, um, maintaining uh, same diameter max dia detailing style will help you for bottom detailing so this is all for detailing style with bottom also we should just have a look at how we can uh, detail minimum dia detailing style for top type so again i have a small presentation wherein i have best fit max dia and minimum dia for top detailing style so when i look over here i have 620 516 for left top 616 for mid and 620 20 40 20 for right top if I have selected maximum dia, it will provide maximum dia of 16 and 20, that is 20 through and the additional required at the bottom. Mean it, it will first try to maintain the same dia or then next move on to the next lower or an upper diameter. Similarly, when I have selected minimum diameter, it has given 16 bar throughout and whatever additional is required is provided over here like 60 20 and 40 20 was required it has now provided 7 16 and 60 20 which will also comply with the required ast so this feature also helps us to detail a beam in actual required manner Continuing with the beam design, I'll just explain you how the biaxial bending and sway shear is, is considered for a beam design. This is my RCDC beam file. I'll just go to settings and general settings. I'll select the ductile design option. So when I am selecting ductile design, I have two more options under it. It is ductile shear at supports and at all sections. So basically when ductile design is done, it is done only for primary beams. So ductile shear at support suggests or says that only the supports will be checked for the uh, ductility of shear at supports. Whereas when it is for all sections, it will check its impact at all the sections of the beams. Next, I also have uh, with this setting, I'll also just select the bending and actual force design which is for the biaxial bending criteria. 
I have the beam. I have to select the beam type wherein I have to design the beam for biaxial bending. I have column support on both sides, which is a uh, pure primary beam. Or I have column support on one side, wherein the beam is supported on column at one side by column at one side, and the other support may be a beam or it can be a cantilever also. Or I can design all the beam for this action. I'll select all beams. Then I can ignore the moment. With along width for value less than point one means if the minor axis moment is less than point one kilonewton meter, I can just avoid it. Similarly, I can avoid the axial force in the same manner. The maximum capacity ratio check has to be less than one. Okay, and then the con uh, we whether we want to consider the slenderness effect for this design or not. By axial bending for beam is basically uh, designing a beam uh, like a column itself. We will just see its design once we auto run the file. These are the other settings which are similar to that of column. I say OK for the settings, and I'll just auto run the file after doing the settings. So once the auto design or the design for the file is done for all the beams is done, we will check the design calculation report in depth for the biaxial uh, bending. Criteria or the effect and the sway shear calculation for the same. I have selected two groups for of a beam, and will now check the design. This is the general uh, data for a beam, wherein this is a grade and all the general data. This is a check for design, wherein these are my forces. Okay, now I will we'll just see the flexure design. Uh, this is the critical load combination. This is the MU for left, mid, and right of beam bottom and beam top. I have over here the minimum eccentricity check. As I have selected the beam, all the beams to be designed for biaxial uh, for biaxial action. These beams will be designed and detailed as that of the column. So I have the minimum eccentricity check for a beam. I have the slenderness check for a beam, my moment capacity check, which will provide the reinforcement considering the PU, axial force, the minor axis moment, the major axis moment, and the PT calculated as per the design steps. Then I have the shear calculation. Over here, we will see how the sway shear is calculated for the sway shear action at the junctions. But before moving ahead to the sway shear calculation check, in line with the same or in continuation with the same, we will also see the section elevation for the same beam groups. When I've selected both the beam groups, I have the elevation over here, wherein these are the design of the beam which it has provided. We'll just what is more important is the section, how it is provided. We can see that the top bottom bars are as it is provided. The side face reinforcement which is provided is uh, is also provided with an additional link or a stirrup for it, right? So this is just uh, detailing and designing the beam. When we detail and design a beam for biaxial bending, it will consider the axial force. It will plot the interaction curve for a beam. Considering the moment capacity and the axial force, it will then design the beam with the column theory and detail it just like a column. So this was with the beam by axial bending, its design and the detail with regards to that of a beam selected for the by axial bending. Now we will just jump over to the left over part that is the sway shear calculation which we had selected to be calculated for the beams. So coming back to the sway shear check, I'll check the same beam for sway shear. I have the flexure design for the beam bottom and the top. I'll just go to the shear design of the beam for left, mid and right. Wherein I have the VU, that is a shear. I have the torsion. I have the torsion for uh, the V. Um, I have the torsional moment which is calculated. I have the shear for dead plus life. Then I'll just calculate the MH and the MS parameters. I'll calculate this sway at right and this sway at left. Then the final view sway. 
so over here i have the tabular representation and calculation for the sway shear as per the methodology or the criteria given uh, which we can see on the screen so over here on the screen we see how the view sway left and view sway right is calculated as per the 13920 clause after selecting the ductile design for shear at supports or shear at all the sections so in this way the uh, sway shear calculation at the required setting as per the user is done and represented here in the tabular form for all the beams and in the sh uh, shear design section so that's all in short with the beam design uh, i hope this video will help you all to uh, come up with the short but the important settings and the facilities that are available with rcdc for the beam design thanks a lot guys bye bye